kind of one of the one of the few guys that's had you know, kind of some sustained success this level two last year. We see kind of from Tanner this year. Maybe one of the guys who can bring some confidence in. Yeah, so Tanner and Sam Nowitzki and Gabe Matthews, uh, to name three. Um, specifically, those three guys are three of the guys that have had success and experience at this level. And we don't have a bunch of those guys throughout the roster that have had a ton of success uh, coming back in Pac-12 play. Um, or experience in Pac-12 play. And so to have those three guys to lean upon, I think it's going to be a really big key for our ball club. Looks like from the depth chart, your infield kind of set there. I mean, you, you feel like the four guys you got there with the two new guys on the left and the two experienced guys on the right? Well, I wouldn't forget about Aaron Zavala either. He's really worked his way into the third base position. Um, and, uh, you know, between him and Kasovich at third base, Kasovich can also be swung to shortstop. Um, you know, between Kasovich and Grant, both are really plus defenders. Um, but I would love to see also um, uh, Aaron Zavala's, you know, love to see his development in the games as well because he's really gotten better defensively, offensively, uh, runs the bases, he brings a ton of leadership. And so a guy like that, I think it's going to be hard to keep out of the lineup as well. Tanner said that the pitching staff has kind of been a lot of the energy of this team, at least over the last few weeks, and they've kind of developed a, a personality of sorts. I mean, how much have you seen their improvement, not, from, not just from fall ball to here, but even just with a you know, couple days left until the season starts? Yeah, that's, a, that's going to be, you know, you live and die with your pitching usually, and so the biggest key is the pitching and specifically the mentality that those guys are bringing to the table. Uh, it's a developing mentality, I guess I can say. Uh, we've seen real progress uh, with the staff. They've, uh, they've got good arms. You know, and so it's really the next step to where they can be successful and what that means and what that specifically means on a daily basis with their mentality and preparation. And we've liked the, the progress they've made, especially recently. Is what, that more of a technique thing or is that sure, uh, surely a mentality aspect? Oh, I think it's a little bit of both. You know, I think you're going to have some techniques that have showed up, um, you know, through Coach Angier. He's got a different message than maybe they've heard in the past, um, just like any pitching coach would. You also uh, you also have a technology piece that's new, whether that can show and yield improvements and signs on a stat sheet and you know that we can see in games and stuff TBA. Uh, but there are big progress signs that we've seen through our scrimmages with our pitching, and that's a good thing because you usually live and die with your arms. What are some of those buttons Jake's tried to push at those guys to get the most out of as the season approaches here? I think Jake is a you know he's a steady Eddie type of a guy. When you talk to Coach Angier, he's not a He's not a get your pom poms out type of a guy. Um, he's a very calming influence. Um, he's a smart guy. He's been around really good baseball people. Uh, some of the people that he uh, have mentored him are absolutely premier coaches. And so, you know, one of them was on my staff at Purdue years ago. He's the head coach at Illinois State, Steve Holm. Uh, brilliant coach, Reggie Christensen at Sac State. He's a really, really good coach. Uh, amongst some other people that have done a great job helping Jake really become the pitching coach that he is. So, um, technique sound. Also, he's a guy that's going to talk a lot of mentality and what that means. You also mentioned the analytic portion of it. I mean, have you been able to see that bear some fruit, or you guys need to wait until you see some real competitive play before you start seeing that? Well, really, the tech piece is a way to communicate with the players. Um, you know, it speaks their language, and so whatever we can use to be able to get through to them is really an asset. And so we're hoping that that obviously through the tech piece, that's one element that hasn't been here before and it's brand new anyways. And so maybe that helps a little bit here and there and all it needs to do is help one guy and it'll be worth it. What do you want to see out of Colin in the opener? And what do you remember about Minnesota from your time in the Big Ten? Uh, Coach Anderson's program at Minnesota is traditionally and historically the best in the Big Ten by far. Uh, John is an awesome coach. He's a very respectable and classy guy. And as guys come to play, um, we're going to need to be ready to play. He's, he doesn't just have Max Meyer starting, who's Team USA's number one guy. I mean, he's got uh, four or five guys, uh, returning guys. Uh, and that doesn't even bring up the new guys, but he's got four or five returning arms that are as good as maybe we'll see all year long. And it happens to be on opening day. So uh, his clubs always have had an edge in terms of their uh, mental approach, especially at the plate. Um, they're not afraid to wear pitchers down and get after it, and they usually punish mistakes. And so he's a really good coach. He's a level-headed guy. I can't wait to, you know, uh, go up against coach again. Uh, but I know this much. I know Colin. Uh, he's developing. Uh, he's going to need his best mentality against Coach Anderson's group uh, to be successful. And I look for I look for Colin to be very successful this weekend. The four stars you picked are all guys who 
pitched at this level before, was that kind of a thinking you wanted to kind of start with some veteran guys and maybe some freshmen pitching them, but go with the veterans early? Yeah, and I mean, you know, for me, it's it's a probably not just pitching ones, but I, I feel as though if it's if it's close to start the year, I want to I want to see the older guy. I want to see the veteran. Um, nothing against the younger guys. We've got some younger guys that have just done an awesome, awesome job um, and look like they're going to be really good players at this level. But, um, you know, there's something to be said for an older guy getting first crack at things. And so through the rotation and maybe through the starting lineup, we'll see that theme. Is Joe Van available out of the pen? Or are you going to bring him along slowly before starting? Or is this... Yes and yes. He'll clearly be available out of the pen. I just don't feel as though uh, he's built his pitch counts up and stuff to where you know, it's an effective start type situation. His mentality's off the charts. Uh, good news is he's healthy, um, but he's not built up yet to where we can chuck him out there for five, six, seven innings, and uh, that would be irresponsible by us as a staff. I was gonna say, was he good with that conversation? Because he came out here a couple weeks ago and seemed pretty convinced that he was gonna be the day one guy. Uh, Kenyon, you know, it <laughs> probably last year, even when he was going through the height of his injury situation, he probably felt the same. It's just his mentality. Uh, and I love it. Uh, I, it wasn't really a discussion that was a difficult discussion at all. Um, I think he knows exactly where he stands uh, better than anybody, and we've had awesome discussion. Uh, Kenyon's also swung the bat exceptionally well, and so look for him to be in the middle of the order on uh, day one because that's how he's played. Obviously, guys always got to play well enough to keep jobs, but do you see a lot of fluctuation in your staff, in your lineup over these first few weeks, or do you want to try to roll with a, a set group for a few weeks and see how guys handle roles that way? Um, for me, I don't like a lot of you know transition through uh, pitching rotations and lineups. Uh, I could see a couple of different types of lineups, but I don't see that there's going to be huge wholesale changes um, in the early going. I want people to play with confidence, mentality, and the way you do that is you got to give them a little bit of rope to fail uh, to where they're not going up there thinking, you know, this is going to be my last at bat if I strike out or this is my last inning I'll ever pitch if I don't do well. Uh, I'm not saying that that's how the kids have felt in the past. I don't know that. I just know that the way that our staff is elected to go with it, we'd like to have a little bit of stability and, and show the players some confidence. And obviously that's going to mean that the coaching staff is going to do, uh, need to do a good job of communicating with all the people that maybe aren't starting to where those guys understand that they need to stay ready to go to where if and when somebody does falter for an extended period that they're ready to jump in there and, and do really well. How's your catcher competition come around? Uh, it's a heck of a competition, and it's still evolving. You know, Sam Olson today would be your starter. Uh, the other two guys, you know, Jack Scanlon would be your number two guy, and Aaron Zavala would be your third guy. Um, you know, Parker Schmidt would be fourth. And, you know, Parker's done a great job some days too, and he looks like a starter. Uh, but Sam consistently throughout the scrimmages during the spring has, has emerged as the leader and he'll get to start on day one. You said Jovan is a two-way. It looks like you have Scanlon and Kasevich are also, those guys are possibly bullpen and, and hitting lines? Uh, Scanlon can chuck it off the mound. Yeah. You know, he's been up to, you know, he's been up to some decent numbers in his life. And so he can, he can assist us on the mound as well. Uh, Kasevich can pitch and he can play a lot of places, shortstop, third base. Uh, he's a plus defender and he can help us. Um, and so, yeah, there are a lot of pieces on the club that can be used in a lot of different ways to hopefully uh, get us some wins. I don't know if you saw Steve's article from the other day, but what does it mean to you to see George Horton back in, uh, back in coaching over at Orange Coast? Uh, it means the world to all of us. Uh, I sat with Coach yesterday for hours at the Alta Belli Memorial Service. I thought the article was very well done. Um, I'm sure he would probably echo that, but I didn't really uh, talk with him specifically about the article. But, uh, you know, I'd let him answer that for himself. But I do know this much. He's um, the memorial service humbles anybody. And, you know, when you get over 10,000 people sitting at Anaheim Stadium uh, and the emotion that was there and every, everything you felt, uh, it was an awful day and it was a wonderful day at the same time. Um, you know, circumstances just tragic and awful. Uh, but spending time with Coach and his family, um, you know, he's an awesome man. And if there's somebody that's going to assist the people on that roster at Orange Coast College to help them be better people, uh, I don't know if any of us would pick anybody better than Coach. And so um, he's obviously good with it. And if he's good with it, we're good with it. And, man, we're excited for Coach to be able to have that opportunity to be able to impact young people's lives that are going through uh, it's rough. 
it's, it's, it's some tough stuff. And seeing the looks on those kids' faces yesterday.